Hey there, nation, and welcome to the show where we help you to play miniatures wargaming on a budget. It is I, Commander Cheapskate, and we're back with an episode of Cheap Shots, the series dedicated to showing you how to save money on the wargaming hobby. And on today's episode, we're going to show you guys how to quickly paint up a team of blooded for your games of Warhammer 40,000 kill team. By following the tips, techniques, and materials we suggest, we will help you paint your kill team for a beautiful tabletop standard for less than $33. Now, when you compare that from materials that you need to buy from Citadel and Army Paint, we will help you save over $214 by doing so. Now, if you'll notice on this picture, this is what the end result will look like for your kill team, uh, for your blooded kill team. If you'll also notice as well, I have two different color schemes going on with these miniatures. And the reason why is because I'm also pairing up these miniatures with Trader Guardsman miniatures from Warhammer Quest Blackstone Fortress. And what I actually did is I took those miniatures and divided in half and did exactly the same thing with the blooded kill team. And I painted one half of that mob of Chaos Cultists to resemble the Blood Pact from from uh, Warhammer 40,000 and the other half to represent something that come from a typical Zeech uh, dedicated chaos cult as well. And I did this because I plan on using both sets of miniatures for games of Necromunda. So if you're wondering why they have two different color schemes for this kill team, that is why that is the case. So that being said, let's go ahead and talk about exactly how you can quickly paint up this kill team for your future games and how it's at the same time help you save a bunch of money while doing so. All right, so the first thing you need to do, of course, is to assemble as well as texture your miniatures, and then you need to prime your miniatures. For the texture, what I like to do is a mixture of wood glue onto the bases, and I dust the base with some sand that I get from my backyard garden. And once that dries, I make a slurry of wood glue as well as water until it's about a 50-50 consistency, and then I apply it like a wash all over the texturing to create an airtight seal to make sure the texturing doesn't flake off the base. And once I do that, of course, I just do a once over real quick with some rolled solium flat white primer. This stuff costs $3.99 at my local Walmart. You can, of course, use Corex white spray, but that stuff costs $17 instead. Now, what priming does is a couple, does a couple of things. First thing that it does is it gives a good surface for your acrylic paint to adhere to. If you were to take acrylic paint and just paint it directly onto bare plastic, it would actually not be able to adhere to the miniature very well, and the slightest bit of friction would remove uh, paint from your miniature and ruin the finish. So that is why you want to use a primer to do so. At the same time, when you use primers, uh, the actual coat that you use actually has a big impact on the vibrancy of the colors that you have in your paint jobs. Traditionally speaking, the more vibrant the paint job you want to have, the lighter the uh, primer, and of course the darker the paint job, the darker the primer you go with. And since we're doing a quick paint method by using oil wash on our miniatures, I'm going to use really bright and vibrant colors, so I go with a white undercoat for this. So the very next thing to do, of course, is to base coat all the flesh on these miniatures. Now, there aren't very much flesh is revealed in these guys, so that part is great. However, what I decided to do is to create some variety of skin tones in my kill team. I took the kill team and divided in half. Half my kill team, I put in two thin base colors of Apple Barrel's Paints Flesh Color, which costs only 50 cents for local Walmart. I put two thin layers on those guys, and at the same time, for the guys on the right-hand side, I used Nutmeg Brown by Apple Barrel Paint. Also costs 50 cents at my local Walmart as well. The color equivalent to these from Citadel would be Bugman's Glow, as well as uh, Cadian Flesh Tone, which costs nine times as much at $4.55. Now, once I paint the portions that I want to be the various color, flesh colors that I want it to be at, and then of course let it dry, and then we move on to our dry brush. So for dry brushing on these guys, I just use a Peaches and Cream by Delta Serum Coat. Cost 50 65 cents at my local Hobby Lobby. Did that for the guys I painted with the flesh tone uh, for their base. And for the guys that did a Nutmeg Brown, I dry brushed their uh, skin with flesh by Apple Barrel Paint. Now what dry brushing actually does, it creates the illusion of depth in your miniatures. What is a path is the pigments of the paint actually adhere to the raised surfaces of the miniature while leaving the darker base colors in the recesses of the miniature as well. This creates highlighting as well as depth. Now it does give your miniatures a bit of a chalky finish, but do not worry when we actually get to our oil wash that's going to smooth out those transitions so you don't need to worry about that too badly. So now that we're done the flesh, next thing you need to do, of course, is start painting the actual uniforms these characters are wearing. So like I said before, I'm going to divide this kill team into two different squads because I'm dedicating one squad to Zneech, while the other one is going to be dedicated to Korn. So for the guys who are done in Zeech, what I do is I pick out their trousers in two thin layers of pewter gray by Apple Barrel Paint. You get this stuff at my local Walmart. And for the guys who are going to be dedicated to Korn, I paint their uniforms in two thin coats of Anita's Acrylic True Red, which costs 65 cents at your local Hobby Lobby. So continuing on with this niche color scheme that I'm going for half this kill team, for the things like the trousers as well as some of the uh, ribbons and wraps that they have in their characters, I'm using three different colors. I'm using Apple Barrel Paints Tuscan Teal as well as Bright Blue. You can get these both products at your local Walmart for about 50 cents. And for the ones that are more of like a teal color, I'm using a color known as Tahitian Blue. It's made by Delta Serum Coat. Costs 65 cents on my local Walmart. I just put two thin layers on the parts that I want to be various shades of blue on these miniatures, and that's exactly what I do. And the reason why I use such uh, different color tones for the 
the blues is to create a little bit more variety on the paint jobs for the kill teams to make it look like that yes while they may be an individual military unit that each fighter has a kind of like their own eccentricities and their own basic fashion sense when it comes to their clothing so now that the uniforms are done with, next we gotta do, of course, is to dry a dry brush on these. Now for the guys I've done in red, I put a thin layer of Tropic Orange on my dry brushing. You can get this at your local Walmart for about 50 cents. It's made by Apple Pearl Paint. And as you can see, that orange does a beautiful job of highlighting the folds of the fabric and creating highlights, as well as depth on the miniatures. As for the guys I did in blue early on the left-hand side, I used Folk Arts Dutch Aqua. You can get this at your local Walmart for about 75 cents. I just dry all the blue fabric on the clothing, so that way we create some depth and also some highlighting on those materials as well. From there, the next detail we work on are the boots that these characters are wearing as well. I decided to kind of make this like brown leather World War II style looking color for the boots just because I was watching Band of Brothers while I was painting these miniatures up in the background. And I just like the look of those boots that they use in that film. So because I use and these acrylic paints, Moccasin Brown, I get this at my local Hobby Lobby for about 65 cents. You just play two thin coats on the boot leather that these characters are wearing and move on to our next details, which we're going to be focusing on the Ogren for this part. So for the mutated ogre, what we're going to focus on is a giant crab-like claw thing that it has on its arm. For that, we're going to pick that on two thin layers of Apple Barrel's Wild Iris. It's a beautiful dark purple color. I get this stuff in my local Walmart for about 50 cents, and I just apply this on that claw clab, and then kind of do a little bit of detailing with some of it going directly up the flesh of the arm to make it look like it's growing out of the mutation uh, from its body. So once that dry, of course, we do some dry brushing. So the first detail I work on is I put some dry brushing directly onto the crab claw that this character is where it has for his left arm. And I use uh, Cameo Pink by Apple Barrel Paint. It costs 50 cents by local Walmart. Does a beautiful job of highlighting those textures on that crab claw arm as well. Now because of that, the crab claw also has some teeth on the crab claw. And this guy also has some tusks coming out of his face as well. So to pick out that detail, I put two thin layers of taupe gray by Ideas Acrylic. You can get this stuff at your local uh, Hobby Lobby for about 65 cents. I put two thin layers on those details and I move on for the rest of the squad. So the next detail we're going to work on now is on the armor panels as well as some of the weapon casings that these guys are carrying. And for those details, we're going to pick out two thin layers of paint to paint. Now for the guys who are dedicated to corn on the right hand side, the only thing I actually end up painting black were the helmets that they're wearing as well as some of the uh, armor of uh, the armor the uh, straps for the armor they're wearing along their arms as well as the legs as well and same thing with their weapon casings of their weapons as well and the reason why is because i'm planning on going with like a straight metallic color for their body armor to kind of reflect the fact that they are dedicated to corn so that's what i'm doing with that design element now for the blooded guys on the left hand side that's the one that's dedicated to snitch what i'm going to do is i'm going to pick up their weapon bo bodies as well as all the armor panels as well and put down two thin layers of pavement plane as well same thing the slave Ogren thing in the background because that's supposed to be dedicated to the kill team that's dedicated to Sneech on this one. And of course, once we do that, next thing we do now is a dry brush. Now for both kill teams, regardless of what color armor they had, what I did is I did a dry brush on all the black elements with uh, Pale Gray by Folk Art. You can get this at your local Walmart for about 75 cents. And then for the armor, I also dry brushed the armor and weapon casings with a thin layer of uh, Anversity Silver by Folk Art. It's a bright silver color that you get at your local Walmart for about 70, uh, 75 cents as well. And the reason why I did that is because I want to make it look like the white underbrushing, dry brushing, as well as the metallic dry brushing will make it look like it's weathered and worn on the armor. At the same time, it brings a lot of the details that we couldn't see earlier. The next major detail we work on as well is all the uh, leather goods these guys are wearing as well. Some of these guys are wearing fur coats. Other people, of course, have leather straps uh, for their armor panels. Some of them have slings, belts, harnesses, all kinds of different things. So for those colors, what we decided to do is to kind of break up the monotony a little bit. For a lot of the leather goods the guys are wearing on their torsos, we use either Anita's um, Moccasin Brown or we use uh, Apple Barrel's Territorial Beige. The Territorial Beige you can get your local Walmart for about 50 cents. We just picked up those details for all the leather goods these guys are wearing on their chest as well as their utility belts as well as the slings for their weapons now as for the wrapping of cording around some of the characters wrists as well as the back of their legs i decided to pick up that detail in two thin layers of khaki paint you can get this at your local walmart for about 50 cents and just did two thin layers there to make it look like it's kind of dirty and stained kind of rags so the last BT deal to record will be some of the weapons these guys are carrying as well. So to create some contrast to some of the weapons that these guys are carrying, I use a couple of colors to do so. The first thing I do, of course, is using some gunmetal gray for some of the weapon barrels and scopes that you're seeing. Same thing with some of the uh, metallic elements for like the gun barrels for like some of like the scopes and things. I picked out two thin layers of uh, silver anniversary silver to make it look a little bit more bright. And the reason why I did that is to make it look like these weapons are a little bit more uh, better maintained than their normal counterparts from the rest of the Imperium, uh, but just because Nietzsche is a little bit more advanced and uh, blood packed especially as a much more highly disciplined unit 
And then from there, of course, I start working on the rest of the different metallic details that are on these miniatures as well. So the colors I used for these were nearly acrylic antique copper, cost you about 65 cents. So anything that I wanted to have in a bronze color, I just used that real quick for that color. But some of the darker grays you see, I used Folk Arts Metallic Gray for that. Gunmetal Gray is a beautiful dark metal color, and I just put two thin layers on things like the magazines and the barrels, things of that nature. Now for the gold and copper details that we see, I actually picked those out in two thin layers of Deco Arts Emperor's Gold, which cost 65 cents at your local Walmart, as well as Folk Arts Copper, which also cost 75 cents as well. And for things that are done with the copper and the gold elements, things like belt buckles, signias, uh, bullet links, those kind of things, I just picked it out in those tin thin layers as well. And then finally, I also gave a quick dry brush over all the weapons in Adversary Silver just to make it look like a little more shimmering, kind of shiny and polished look at the weapons to make it look like these things were better maintained by these gangs. And the very last thing we did, of course, was work on some of the finer details as well. So for some of these metallic, uh, some of these leather goods that we had that are kind of messed around throughout the, like things like face wraps, uh, bits of leather and skin, I picked out two thin layers of khaki paint for those. As for the green elements of the weapons as well, things like the frag grenades, for example, I picked that on two thin layers of holly branch, which cost 50 cents at my local Walmart. And then I would dry brush those same elements with lime sherbet, which also cost 50 cents at my local Walmart as well. I also use a lime sherbet to do things like power cords and power cells, like for the plasma gun, for example, or for the ventilation tube going from the Oberon's respirator to its oxygen tank. I just put down those two thin layers as well. And now that we're done for all the base coats and the dry brushing, the next thing we need to do now is start working on the bases. Now, because these miniatures will be used in an upcoming Nickermunda campaign, I decided to make these guys match the Underhive as well. So I put two thin layers of Peter Gray directly onto the bases. Now, if you'll also notice in this picture, some of the white undercoat is appearing through the bases, but that is perfectly fine because we're going to dry brush these uh, bases with pale gray anyway, so it's going to look like it's part of the paint job. In fact, as you can see in this picture here, that's exactly what we decided to do. We dry brushed the bases with the texturing with pale gray. So any of that white undercoat that I was peering through earlier just looks like it's actually part of the actual overall effect, which looks quite nice. And now that we're done dry brushing the bases, the next thing we need to do now is an oil wash. Now we're going to use oil washing to do the overall oil uh, washing for these miniatures and when it comes to this kind of a step a lot of people like to use Army Painter Strong Tone which is made by Army Painter which it does exactly what it's supposed to do it does a wonderful job of doing what it's supposed to the only problem though is it's really expensive at $32 per can what I like to use instead is Midwalk Poly Shades in Mission Oak Color and that costs only $6.99 at your local Walmart and it looks really awesome as well now what the oil washing does is a couple of things the first thing that the oil washing does is that it seeps directly into the recess of the miniatures and brings out a lot of the detail that we couldn't see before. So things like the shadows of the fabric, the gaps between armor panels, between cordings, the different textures that we're seeing on the bases, rivets of the guns, all those different beautiful details are being brought up by that oil wash. The second thing the oil wash also does, it also smooths out the transitions between our base coats as well as our dry brushing. So you'll notice that chalky appearance that we had earlier has now disappeared because the oil wash has smoothed out those transitions between the dry brushing as well as the base coating. And the third thing that the oil wash also does as well is it also mutes down the vibrant see the colors. If you'll notice these bright vibrant colors we're using throughout the painting process have now been more subdued, but more grimy and dirty as also different shaded. And that's exactly what we're looking for when it comes to the oil wash as well. Now, regardless of whether you're using Minwax Poly Shade Acrylic or Army Painter Strong Tone, both products do contain polyurethane. So you will need to wait 24 hours for this material to dry and cure. What the polyurethane will do is it'll put a clear coat, protective coating over your miniatures. It keeps them from fading as well as chipping, but it does leave a high gloss sheen. So if you don't like that high gloss look you will need to do a spray varnish using matte varnish to do that and that's the next step that we focus on next so now that we're done waiting for this stuff to dry and cure for 24 hours the next thing we do of course is get a can of Krylon matte varnish spray which costs $5.99 at my local Walmart and I do a quick once over the entirety of the miniatures the reason why I do this is to mute down the high gloss sheen that comes from the uh, polyurethane and the mid wax poly shade and I know some people like having that high gloss look so if you're a fan of that uh, you could skip this step this step is totally optional and the very last detail we're going to use, of course, is to use Skyline by Folk Art to rim the bases of the miniatures. I like to use Skyline because it's a beautiful grayish blue color that I use for all the Nicker Moon miniatures in the studio's collection. So I just put two thin layers around the bases, and once we are done, these guys are ready to be put onto the tabletop. 
So there you guys have it. This is the end result that we have for this kill team. We have two different kill teams being represented here with two different paint schemes, and that's because one's going to be dedicated as niche as well as with corn. And regardless that you look at it, even though we're using a lot of different paints to create two different kill teams, it is still way cheaper than using the materials from Games Workshop or from Ari Painter as well. So that being said, let's go and talk about exactly what you need to buy from Ari Painter as well as from Citadel to paint exactly the same way we did, but using their materials instead. So when it comes to the paints that you need to buy from Citadel as well as Army Painter, you will need to buy the following. These colors are Thunderhawk Blue, Nagarath Knight, Fulgrim Pink, Teclas Blue, Caliban Green, Luganeth Orange, Cyberite Green, Bugman's Glow, Cadian Fleshstone, Morgas Bone, Baylor Brown, Slanesh Gray, Eshin Gray, Flayed One Flesh, Baharoth Blue, Mephiston Red, XV88, Rakarth Flesh, Rust Gray, and Ulthawan Gray, and all of those colors are going to cost you four dollars and fifty-five cents a piece, which is anywhere between nine to six times more expensive than the materials that I use in my Cheapskate method. Now, you will also need to buy the furling prints as well. You need to buy Brass Scorpion, Lead Belcher, Scream Bell, Iron Breaker, Aethermatic Blue, Retributor Armor, as well as Astro Granite for texturing, and all those pots are going to cost you seven dollars and eighty cents for each of those, which are going to be about ten times more than the actual metallic paints that I use to do exactly the same thing. And as for the basing, I I don't need to use Astro Granite because I just use wood glue as well as sand. You will then also need to buy a can of Corax White Spray for $17 to do your priming, a can of Munitorium Varnish which is going to cost you $19.50 if you decide to do the spray varnish with matte finish, and of course if you decide to do the oil washing you'll need to buy a can of Arm Painter Strong Tone which is going to cost you $32. Now assuming that you're purchasing everything from Citadel as well as Army Painter for the very first time, you're talking about a grand total investment of $214.10 to paint up your, our, your miniatures the same way we did but by using these named ad products instead. Now, when you compare that with my Cheapskate method, which only costs $32.62, you're talking about a grand total savings of $181.48. So there you guys have it. That's exactly the savings right there shown for you guys. So in conclusion, we can help you create a beautiful tabletop standard for your blooded kill team and at the same time save you a bunch of money. And as you can see, this is exactly what they'll look like by doing the very same paint technique that we used as well. So there you guys have it. As always, please feel free to like, comment, and or subscribe. Your guys' input is invaluable to us as always. Also check us out on Facebook, Instagram, as well as blogger.com for all those greatest hobby news related to this channel. That's good with us, you guys. I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out and stay classy. Thank you.